We are live. It's true. Just trying to adjust my music levels a little bit. Okay. I think I think we're good. So you had a uh, a Joe Byron moment right there, just looking around, confused on camera. Just looking at the just looking at the pretty colors. That's all. All right. Well, if anybody decides to show up, this will be my intro. Welcome to the stream. Uh, we're going to talk about Avatar, the live action, uh, episode two for now. See how much time we got after. Should be pretty quick. I'm going to try to put us where we left off, which is... Uh, I think they had already made it to Kyoshi Island. I don't remember. Yeah, I think I think that's right where we left off. Hmm. All right, I think I got it figured out. All right. Do you just want me to flip through these and and see what we want to what we want to discuss? Yeah, let's do it. If you got anything that stuck out to you, um, you know, and I'll I'll chime in where where I see fit. I think the stream crashed as we were admiring Suki's makeup and overall character. So um, yeah, I think they did a terrific job with her and all the Kyoshi warriors. Yes. Um, I also, I also like uh, this, you know. I like I like good visuals, and this one was pretty funny to me. Like, we need a sign. Oh, let me get a sign. <laughs> I think right after that, one of the warriors is like, "Is that a sign?" I love it. I like when they throw the uh, the quirky comedy in from the from the anime. Because the live action can get a bit serious at times, or serious compared to what the anime was. Right. So. Yeah, no, I mean, there's nothing a lot to, not a whole lot to talk about. The first time I watched this episode, I told myself, I don't, I don't remember seeing a whole lot of men, and I was pretty sure there were men in the animated series, and then I got back to... To like take these screenshots and I was like oh there are men I don't know why I missed them the first time 
so I felt pretty silly about that. Um, but like I, the reason I remember that is like in the animated series, the man is the one that uh, introduced like the town to the to the gang or whatever. Not not the I guess that's the Suki's mom or whatever. So yes. yeah, so they made a, a little change, and I don't. It didn't feel wrong to me. Uh, you and I have talked before about like how it feels, and it still felt right. Like it's a whole town full of women warriors that are badass. Like why not? Why not have a woman, uh, you know, introduce introduce the town or try to warn them off or say you know say what she said? Makes more sense than having a, a dude as a leader. Uh, absolutely, I think. You know, they hit a, a few changes in this episode, um, especially when it came to, like, the introduction of General Zhao and kind of relationships of people knowing each other and some of the events that kind of took place and how they ended up here at Kyoshi Island. Uh, it, it was a bit of a change, but like we've talked about, I, I like that there's some little tweaks. I, I don't want the same exact step for step. Otherwise, I'll just go watch the anime. Um, right. But it felt really good that the, the way they did this. And I think a conversation we can get into is there's some tweaks that they made in episode two. And there's quite a few more changes that they made in episode three that I think condensed some things down and rushed some storylines, which we can get into later. But what I'm getting at is in terms of changing things, it still felt like they kept the true essence of this part of the story even though there's some minor tweaks in there right i know that one of the like just something that i noticed uh i have been watching like shorts and tiktoks like talking about the changes usually in a negative way and this this thing that i noticed was more like um just a just an observation episode one took three animated episodes to tell the story of episode one and this this did the opposite it took one episode from the animated series which is like 20 minutes long and turned it into an hour so i you know i don't i don't know why the decision to do that but i i personally think that if they wanted to expand on that it was a it was a good choice but you know now i'm i'm sure die hard animated fans are worried about the like how they're going to fit all the story and if they take one 20 minute episode and blow it up into a whole hour ordeal uh i i personally like this episode i thought it was good um i just uh i was just pointing that out that they they did you know, they picked one 20 minute episode and expanded on it quite a bit. So I was, I was trying to figure out why they would do that. I don't have an answer. Maybe because this was such a fan favorite episode right here with the Kyoshi Warriors, the introduction of Suki, uh, Avatar. Oh man, why am I blinking on her name right now? Um, Katara or uh, Kyoshi? No, Kyoshi. Kyoshi, yeah. that's right. Uh, yeah, just the the weight of the material that they could cover in this episode is something that everybody remembers versus I, I want to keep comparing it to like episode three, where they take three different storylines and mold it into one, basically one episode, three different people in different locations, all in one city. Uh, it's interesting that they decided to do that. What you said, where they take one animated episode and expand it in an hour form. Right, man. I wish Netflix had the time and the money to do that for each animated episode. I think that, that would be really cool, and you could do some fun things with it. Uh, but I think realistically, to do something like this, you know, where you really get to flesh out one piece, you pay for it in later episodes, like we do further in the season. But I really enjoyed it. This, this, and I think I share it with many others. Was my favorite episode, I think, for the entire season. I have not finished um I have not finished the series yet. I think I'm on episode 5 or 6. Um 
But this is easily my favorite episode so far. And I, you know, this, this one was really good. I was, uh, I, I did hear like a bunch of negative stuff about, I guess, Aang doesn't like try to learn water bending at all in the season. Is that true? I didn't, I didn't finish it. So I, f I finished it last night. Uh, there's no, there's not really a big concerted effort on his part to learn water bending. Um, hmm. You know, and, and in a way, in in the show, there's a lot more time that they cover of just like them kind of sitting around or on, along their travels or in between these big arc moments. Uh, you know, where they're just kind of sitting around the campfire, like Katara is down by the river working water, and Angle go down there and mess with her for a little bit, but kind of avoids his responsibility. I feel like they skip that, showing those moments, those little side moments that you get in the animated series, mm -hmm. uh, in the live action. Yeah, I definitely don't see him that I can remember really making a concerted effort to learn water at all. I think I have an answer for that, but I would have to go back and compare. Uh, I know that uh, in the live action, at least in the very first episode, uh, Yatso or whatever his name is, is basically telling another master airbender that Aang learned unnaturally fast. And I think we can take that maybe in two, two ways. One that, He's a quick learner regardless. You know, he's the youngest airbending master in their in their memory. But I, I think, you know, either as the avatar or or whatever, you know, whatever reason they give, he's probably got like a natural aptitude for all bending. And, you know, maybe they'll do some flashback scenes or something in season two to show him practicing with Katara or whatever. You know, that's a that's a good guess. I'm probably going to say they're not going to do that just because I've seen how season one ends. Okay. And I've seen the progression of how how fast Katara grows in her ability to waterbend. I feel like, you know, she's slowly kind of learning how to become more advanced and really work to control water. And all of a sudden, in like the last episode and a half, She's just all of a sudden at like a master waterbender level. Hmm. And I definitely remember in the show at that point, she was much, she was, she was farther advanced in her waterbending. Um, but it showed throughout the season, her working with her waterbending a lot along their journey. And I don't feel like you get that a whole lot in season one and the live action from Aang's perspective and Katara's. But yeah, just as you go along the season, you're gonna you're gonna get to the season finale, and all of a sudden, Qatar is just gonna be whipping ass, pun intended, huh. with water. I wonder. So, do you feel like it's like a, like maybe they missed uh, an episode of t an episode or two's worth of time to develop that? Like, like is that yeah, I like feel a, like that's what's missing? Is it um, like a big shock or? I mean, I, I don't know. I haven't I haven't seen it, but now I'm curious. I mean, it, it's kind of hard to, like, quote-unquote, spoil something for you because pretty much everything happens the same, mm -hmm. general, like, in a basic sense. But just she goes to, at the end of the season, to battle a waterbending master because, like in the animated show, they don't let women waterbend. Or right. they don't let women fight not waterbend they, they don't let them fight right and she wants to get out there and fight and they won't change their ways and so anyway she challenges a master to a duel it basically pretty much holds her own i wouldn't say she wins but she she holds her own for sure and you know they start in that episode calling her master katara and so you see her hold her own against uh, a master bender and you also see her fight Zuko. And Zuko's like this protege, been trained by, you know, the the best firebending masters in, in their kingdom and, you know, has been out traveling, fighting, 
having these worldly experiences that Katara just qu quite hasn't had that much experience in. Right. And she's holding her own against him, against masters. People are calling her a master bender, and you're just like, what, how, how did we get here? How did that happen all of a sudden? It just feels a, a bit rushed. Okay. Just something's off in it, I feel. Yeah. Uh, so maybe not a, it's more like a pacing thing than like some yeah. kind of flaw with the show. It's more about pacing. Yeah. Yeah. I, I don't think they're not being true to the show. I think, like you said, it's a pacing thing and they just kind of skipped a lot of m moments that they could have done differently uh, to kind of show more effort and trying to master their element. Right. Hmm. Yeah, I'll have to keep an eye out for that. I'm interested to see if I can, um, like, maybe find a short clip or a good screenshot of her, like, not doing so well in, say, like, episode six or still practicing and then show the contrast to, you know, the finale or whatever when she stomped Zuko. Um, I wonder if there'll be, like, a... I wonder if I'm going to feel that level of, uh, like, shock or whatever. I'm curious. Yeah, I'll be curious what your opinion is, and if I and if I miss those moments, definitely I, I want to see them pointed out. Because thinking back, I can't remember. I mean, there's definitely moments in there where she's working with water bending, but to the level of what she meets at the end of the season, it's it's a bit of a miss. I'm I'm also curious if the I mean, it almost feels like the live action is depending on the avatar state for Aang. Like he doesn't need to learn all the elements because he just relies on the avatar state. It's almost like what it feels like to me. That is a uh, very perceptive uh, opinion. And hmm. I would agree with that, that's, having finished the season. That's unfortunate, because like, he uses all the elements quite often like as he's... As you go through the animated series, he uses them pretty regularly, I think. I mean, huh. okay. I, have yeah, to I wouldn't say quite this that. early. You know, in season one, you know, and even in the show, he's only air and water so far. Right. You know, like there's no, there's no earth and fire bending. Um, but I don't really feel like I've seen very many moments of Aang working with water. I think there's one where Katara is working with him down at the river mm -hmm. and Aang is kind of trying to help her um with some advice of just how to focus on water or just really just some general advice in general about bending about how how you need to feel the energy flow through you you know rather than forcing your i guess what you want on the element let the element work with you right they yeah. kind of have a moment like that but i feel like that's really the only one-on-one -on -one interaction you get that was uh, after she gets the scroll, right? I think I have a slide of that yeah. in here somewhere. Um, that's that makes me a that makes me ask the question: um, How are they going to handle Toph and Zuko? Because if they skipped the water bending, like that was how they bond, how Katara and Aang bonded was over water bending, and it it brought to light like Sokka's like self-doubt about being good at anything because he can't bend like a lot of the a lot of the story building that happened was because Aang is learning things that literally nobody else could do and Katara's you know Katara Toph and Zuko are basically the best that that they can that they have access to and like obviously the relationship between Aang and Zuko is like like their their developing relationship is like a huge point of season three. I mean, I I'm curious how they're going to handle that. Yeah. So for me, I think what they're doing, and and I remember this some in the animated series. I'm rewatching it as I'm going through this this live action, is that their intent was to go to the North Water Tribe. Northern Water Tribe to find a master to teach Aang and Katara. So throughout season one, I think Katara tries to, you know, relay what little she feels like she can to Aang. 
mm -hmm. but she's not really teaching Aang because she's under the impression that she's still a novice, which she is, and that Aang needs a master to teach her. So that's the, in the animated series, that's the whole goal to get to the Northern Water Temple to find a master for them both. It's a little different in this series and more specifically this episode because Kyoshi tells them to go to the Northern Water Temple because there's going to be a cataclysmic event coming. Mm. And that's kind of the driving force in the show for them to go north versus in the animated series it was more specifically to find a master. And so when they get to the Northern Water Temple, they look for a master and just because of some of the elements of the show, the, I don't want to call it sexist, but I guess it is, uh, just their way, their culture of not letting women fight, they rather the women heal with water. Uh, Katara kind of proves them wrong in their ways, and that's a growth aspect for the show. And then they come to the conclusion at the end that Katara is just as good as any master who could teach Aang. And so I think that that's going to be the focus in season two is more Katara is going to teach Aang because now she's hit the mark of a master waterbender. And then she'll train with him until they come across Toph. And then she'll start training with Aang. I think, I think you're way. right. I think you're right. Because he kind of trains with Katara and Toph at the same time because there's even a bit of that rivalry between Toph and Katara about who can teach him better who I don't want to say who's making more progress, but just kind of what's the right approach with Aang, and they both do it in a different way at the same time. Right, and it's related to the element that they bend. Uh, Toph's like really hard on him, and Katara tries to be more flexible, but they they both... Uh, isn't that where Aang finally starts to get um, like pushed into... like They're not just like teaching him, they're like bullying him almost. Like, you have to learn this. Isn't that where that happens? Isn't episode uh, season two yeah i think that's really from toff because because katara is kind of like she's like a an early mother you know where she mm -hmm. she pushes him to the point where he pushes back and then she backs off and toff's like nah i'm not playing that you're gonna hit these benchmarks that i lay out in front of you and if you don't you're gonna get crushed quite literally i think she also uh, like but, threatens to leave too doesn't she she might that that I don't, I, don't I don't remember. I don't remember. I'm not there yet. But hmm. I do want to make a point before I forget how you were talking about uh, Sokka's journey throughout season one of learning his own role and being confident in himself because he's not a bender. And you are not going to be disappointed in that aspect because they do hit that benchmark, especially oh. towards the end of the season. Okay. Okay. I'm, ex I'm excited now. You know, I... I'm glad we talked about all this because, like, getting in the right frame of mind of, you know, like, is the show true to, like, the source material? That's that's always, like, a, like an on-the-fence kind of thing of whether they do it or not. But so far, it feels like the show, and, like, that's that's what's been the most important thing to me is does it feel like Avatar? And up to the point where I'm at right now, it does. Like, I think where I'm at in the show is, um, is Aang, Aang and Zuko broke out of the, that prison or whatever. And Aang found out that, that Zuko is the guy in the mask. So yeah, like that's, that's where I'm at currently. And I think, uh, I think Aang had to try to go find Avatar Roku's shrine or something like that. But that's, that's where I'm at currently. And it still felt, like it still felt like the animated series to me just in in person it still feels good 100 percent. i think in watching the whole season in conclusion and and we'll get back to focusing on this episode but i would say that the live action probably runs about 60 to 80 percent one for one with the show and then that missing 40 to 20%, depending on the episode you're on, is either condensed or they just manipulate something in a different way. But it's all for the same goal. They're not, I don't feel like they're changing anything. They all still have the same path. It just might look a little different getting there. Hmm. So in watching it, you're still getting the same message. You're still seeing the same story. It, the steps to get there might just look a little different sometimes. 
Right. And sometimes they look exactly how they did in the show. Like when Aang goes to visit the uh, fire temple, it they condensed a little bit, but it almost goes one for one, even with the characters that he meets and how it plays out at the at the temple. Right. It had the same. Uh, I mean, we could talk about it when we get to that episode. But uh, I, yeah. I I agree. I've seen it, and I think it's pretty close. Like. Uh, I I think it's pretty close. I wonder if my voice is clipping. Is one of my sounds good on my end. Uh, not in your headphones. I mean, on the on the live stream. Gotcha. I don't really have a good way to test that. Because one of my settings is different. I think it's probably fine. Um, I'll just have to go back and listen to it. It's not a big deal. I mean, one of those videos that we had some success on, my audio is all over the place, so not worried about it. I am taking a screenshot of my settings, though, for reference. <laughs> Good. Good. Um, did you want to get back to try and get through? I mean, I you know, like we're talking about the show in general terms. There's not really much specific to talk about. Um, mostly... Mostly was I was looking for like facial expressions like uh, Sokka here. Uh, this is right after uh, Suki like said something to him, and you know is his mouth literally hitting the floor like in the animated series? No, but I think this is a pretty good approximation for being in person. You know, I we've got. We've got like serious, I have to save the world first. And then she says something to him and he's like, what? <laughs> and he, he does that. He does it pretty often too. Like, like I just try to get, get the facial expressions and every time it's like, they've got it down pretty good. I, w I would agree. I think, you know, as best they can, like like we've talked about in the past, they're not going to be able to make his eyeballs as big as his head. Uh, but I think after watching the show for, for multiple episodes, you start to kind of see the same quirks come out, the same personality in the character. You see the way that each actor or actress is trying to portray their character. And I think Sokka does a really good job, the best he can, because at the end of the day, it's a live action. Um, right and you still get that feeling of he's he's a goofball you know he's a he's a bumbling klutz in a in a way um right. awkward but he's awkward. yeah he's awkward but you know witty <laughs> at really opportune times and and lucky more than anything uh it's it's really cool to see them grow throughout the show uh, and I felt like this was a really good episode. I think episode two was really nice that they slowed that pace down where they decided to just focus on one animated episode and drag it out and really flesh things out. And you get to see the characters meet each other and grow in their relationships. The, the Suki and um, Sokka relationship, you get to see more Uncle Iroh and Zuko, which was great. The, the one character that's been kind of off for me and even at the end of the season is Katara. Just for me, something just doesn't feel quite right with her. It's cause she's not uh, complaining about her dead mom. Like, I mean, in the, in the animated series, like she talks about her mom all the time and it's relentless and everybody's sick of it. At, at least I was, I mean, I, maybe I'm misremembering, but that was, that was what I remembered as like a main personality yeah. trait it's like how oh, i stubbed my toe oh i remember when i stubbed my toe when my mom was alive like give it a rest lady like yeah maybe i'm yeah, wrong i mean that's i'm sure that's part of it uh i don't think that that's the big thing missing for me i feel like what i see is the actress that they got to play katara is a bit more meek Oh, then yeah. animated Katara. I was about to and say that, that comes across. Yeah. So you see like Zuko nail on the head, uncle right. Iroh, 
I was a bit shaky at the start, but by the end, I'm better. on board. Yeah. That's my dude. Hang. I get it. There's going to be limitations with him. Um, but right. some of these characters, you could see the growth there. Katara, for me, just feels very meek compared to her animated counterpart. And I kind of miss that because she's like the real glue that holds everybody together. Right. Uh you know, I'm gonna I'm gonna draw a comparison from the Wheel of Time because the oh, the shit. same well the same problem that <laughs> the same thing that feels off for you uh, about Katara is the same thing I feel off about with Nynaeve for the most part. Nynaeve is really oh her character is is way more aggressive in the books than she is in the okay. show, like. Like and that and that's I think that's kind of what you were talking about is that Katara in the animated series is usually pretty forceful. Like she has strong opinions, and she's gonna tell you and like loud and proud basically. And it's pretty much like a fight anytime it doesn't match. And uh, is that is that what you're talking about? Because it's it seems like she's soft. I guess meek, yeah. like you said. Yeah, I think I think that's pretty much it. Just the live action Katara is feels like she's we're just missing that dynamic and and I think that that's something I talked about in the last episode that we did where something feels a bit amiss between her and Sokka mm -hmm. and I feel like it's that meekness. Like it, at times you see it, you know, the dialogues there or something, but the delivery's a bit off. Yep. Or you know, there's opportunities for, for Katara to be a bit more, I think present is maybe the wrong word, but uh, taking charge of a situation. Right. right. Um, I feel like she was more of a leader in the animated series than, than she is in this. And I mean, she still kind of fills that role, but like we said, it's the meekness. It just, it feels off. I think you're right. Um... I, uh, in contrast to Katara and how she feels kind of off, I think uh, the actress playing Suki nailed this, uh, nailed this kind of like, I'm a giant, you know, I'm a badass warrior, but I don't really know a lot about men. And so like the, this screenshot that I have up right now is right after they uh, are trying to see who's better at like combat by the by the melons or whatever and oh, yeah. and Sokka's like uh I'm gonna go and then this screenshot right here took me a while to grab but this is where she's like what what did I do I thought what happened like she thought everything was is going it, pretty good <laughs> is that where she put him in the chokehold yeah 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 this is outside right after the where she uh chops the melons up with the the fan and then he says well I'm I'm really Really more about hand to hand combat and then she stomps him. Yeah, she was like, say less. <laughs> yeah. Say less. <laughs> yeah. Come on, bro, let's go. But I, yeah, the facial expressions were fantastic. Like her body language in this scene was perfect. She's like, uh, what did I do wrong? I mean basically. Yeah, it just it felt like it had that awkward teenage yeah vibes yeah. between a boy and a girl that weren't like really sure how to interact with each other and the boy got his his ego hurt and she, you know yeah. she's like wait what what happened no I, I think that they crushed that he's he's picking on you because he likes you but in reverse <laughs> yeah <laughs> uh and then uh you know like moving on to the next part of Sokka's little journey is uh they like Sokka walks by and I think in the animated series this unfolds a little differently I actually like this the way this played out better in this in the live action this like all the chemistry was there like you said the awkward teenage got you know the awkward teenage feeling was there at first and then like in contrast to that that uh like you could feel the sparks flying it was very very strong and very well done because uh, you've got like Sokka's like I felt all these emotions all at once I felt Sokka's awkwardness around Suki I felt Suki's awkwardness around Sokka 
I felt Sokka as a potential warrior focused on learning, and I felt Suki's uh, focus on training all at the same... Like, I felt all four of those things at the same time. Yeah. No, absolutely. And, I mean, I, that's why I wish that they were able to spend more time breaking down each episode because I think there would be an opportunity to have a lot more growth in that aspect. Uh, you know, Suki was a big fan favorite for the live action. And I think she really benefited that her time on screen was a moment in the show where they were really dragging a piece of the story out versus everybody else who has to kind of rush through some things right. and grow in different aspects. And they're trying to cover a lot of emotions um hmm. yeah i mean i think they really they really knocked this episode out the park yeah i think, I think so it gets too. really interesting towards the end oh yeah of course you can't have a you can't have a avatar kiyoshi show up anywhere without a without a superhero landing <laughs> um uh i was i didn't try to fact check this or anything i just took the screenshot because i was curious so the avatar state gives you the strength of a thousand benders like i'm not not sure how true that is but i took it uh i think it's pretty accurate yeah maybe i mean maybe i don't know I, I don't know it a thousand benders sounds like a lot to fight with uh somebody like ozai with sozin's comet in the air like is that a a valid comparison like because gyatso and the previous fire lord fought and they were pretty equally matched with the same comet in there so like maybe she's exaggerating a true. little bit <laughs> but did it's been it's been probably four or five years since i've seen the fight between the fire lord and ang i don't remember him being in the avatar state the entire fight he wasn't no he wasn't but I feel like once he got in the Avatar state, he kind of, the tides of the fight changed. Um, well, that's, he couldn't enter the Avatar state because of what Azula did to him. Ooh. Okay. So, and Ozai unintentionally, like, fixed his chakra or chi or whatever it was. And he was able okay. to he he entered it like immediately after that happened after it got fixed yeah but uh anyways um that wasn't really that important it, do, it doesn't matter i was just curious if uh that was true or not i'm sure somebody on the internet will tell me get in the comments um i think i think i broke these down by like the gang so like uh katara sokka ang and then I also yeah. I also split it off into like Zuko slides. So I think this is back at the beginning of the episode uh, where they meet where they meet Zhao for the first time or for the second time or whatever. Um, yeah. Well, this is just where Zhao. Okay, this is just where Zhao shows up to Kyoshi, I guess, and starts. Yeah. So this talking smack about the middle of the episode. Yeah. Which, you know, for me, General Zhao's character seems different. But in all honesty, I'm not mad. I'm not mad with the actor that plays him. Um, this, this is the guy that thought he was doing the blue avatars, right? Pretty sure. I think, I think so. No, no, that's uh, the Fire Lord. Oh, really? Oh, that's hilarious. I'm pretty sure it was him. Um, but yeah, no. So General Zhao's character, they, they did some tweaks with them, you know, like, uh, Zuko and Uncle Iroh weren't familiar with them in the live action where they were in the animated series. Uh, that changed some things and just going through his character throughout season one, it was, it was a bit different, but I like it. He, this one, see the live action General Zhao seems a bit more bureaucratic a little bit more political oh, yeah you're right versus general Zhao in the animated series seems like a real tough badass that's you know out in the field 
That's a good point. Like he he was more more like intimidation rather than slyness, I guess. Yeah, that's a good way to put it. Uh, it is it is, Zhao, uh, the guy. Uh, his name is uh, Ken Lung. Thought he was auditioning okay. for a role in James Cameron's Avatar instead of for that of Commander Zhao. So, <laughs> which uh, honestly. That's that's what actors are for. They're flexible, you know. Talk about uh, you know, like, pe- uh, one of the things that I get upset about is like when an actor gets uh, typecast, you know, like John Wick can or not John Wick, Keanu Reeves can hardly do any movie that's not action at this point because that's what he does the best at. Yeah. But you know, like I I don't like typecasting as a principle and. I, I think that uh, I think that this is a good example. Like he thought he was gonna go in and be like some military dude for James Cameron's Avatar, and now he's gotta like fill a totally like how do you how do you go from that to oh by the way you're a firebender? Do you know what that is? <laughs> it's a little different. Yeah, maybe that's why he was a little bit more bureaucratic in the the hierarchy of the military i don't know not really that would that's Mm. more of a writer's decision with his character but i i think so but still like he played the part well and it's convincing like i i totally see uh fire nation like a big theme of the fire nation at least from what we've seen so far of like azula and zuko and ozai is that ambition is rewarded and basically Zhao uh, betrayed and threw Zuko under the bus immediately and got promoted. They are uh, they are a nation full of dark friends. <laughs> That's funny. Uh, <laughs> dark friends. I was uh, reading reading part of the Great Hunt uh, book two earlier today while I was on my lunch, and I found some good passages to talk about. Uh, as they relate to the show whenever we get a chance to do that. Yeah. Uh, uh, the, I took a screenshot of the fight scene because I thought it was cool. You know, they had Suki and, and Sokka teaming up and I thought it was uh, pretty excellent. Like, the, the little bit that they were on screen was was pretty cool. And then I, uh, I believe, yeah, here's uh, Kiyoshi... And here's the superhero landing, which, you know, the screenshot doesn't do it any justice whatsoever. Uh, if I make a, a short out of this, I'm going to have to go find the actual, the actual clip and uh, make sure I put the whole thing in there. Maybe I can, uh, what would be the most disruptive? I could do like, a, I could do a short where it shows her like leaving the shrine and then right before she lands and makes the wave, I just cut off the short. <laughs> a little blue ball is for him. <laughs> they can go watch the short somewhere else. No, man. It's- I saw a ton of people getting angry about this, about Kiyoshi taking over Aang's body. It, isn't that, I'm- isn't that kind of what happened or it's not his, his body doesn't turn into her body, does it? No, it. I mean, it does. You so it didn't happen here. Okay. Um, and I saw people saying that like Kyoshi doesn't take over Aang's body, like Aang doesn't transform into anybody else, and or Aang doesn't get taken over, and that's that's not accurate. Kyoshi does take over Aang, it, and it happened in the animated series. It happened during Avatar Day episode. So oh, it yeah, is you're possible, right. like in the show, she does take over Aang's body. It might not happen here, but it does happen. Do they go back to Kyoshi at some point? Is that what you're talking uh, about? Like they end up what, back what on Kyoshi. Like you said, it doesn't happen here. Um, does that mean they leave the island and come back at some point? In the animated series or yeah. in the live action? Yeah, in the animated series. I don't believe they do go back to Kyoshi Island. Um, oh, but they were I think there it longer. Somewhere else. Well, it could have been that, or they. I just remember the event. I think Avatar Avatar Day was like in season two. 
Let's see, let me do some quick research. Yeah, so it's season two, episode five. Okay. Uh, I do not know the location of where they were off the top of my head. But just when I was listening to people say that online, when I was just going through getting some videos in my feed, people were complaining about that as another reason to put the show down. And I was just like, man, people are really grasping at straws, trying to like find things to be cranky about. Uh, I think, do they know that they're wrong? I think it, maybe it was like, so there's Kyoshi Island and there is a statue on Kyoshi Island, but I'm thinking that there may have been like a separate temple that they were at for Avatar Day. I can't, I can't remember. Uh, well, gonna... I believe they're in the Earth Kingdom. Right. Right, yeah. but there, I thought there was like some kind of uh, temple or shrine or something dedicated to like maybe just her or maybe multiple avatars. Or it was like, I think it may have been like a kingdom or a city of the Earth Kingdom where Kyoshi like wrecked everybody to restore the balance. Like the Earth Kingdom was trying to like pull a Fire Nation thing and Kyoshi came out there to stop it. Or something like that. That's what I remember. Okay. Uh, obviously, you know, subject to mistakes. But I, I, regardless of what happened, this scene was cool as shit. So. Yeah, no, it was badass. Even if it didn't happen in the animated series, I'd still be happy with this because it was the best fight scene of the show thus far. Yeah. Yeah, totally. Totally stomped them. I enjoyed it. Um, oh, here's my, I think this is the start of my Zuko slides. Uh, and mostly it's, mostly it's Zuko being mad and Iroh being chill. I really like this screenshot that I took. I think I captured like Iroh's concern pretty well. It's really hard to capture these like just right. Netflix is not, Netflix and Amazon don't let me really go frame by frame to, to grab these. I'm excited for you to get more towards the end of season one. I feel like the episode that you're at where Zuko puts on the blue mask mm -hmm. and goes and saves Aang is kind of the start of the show really diving into Iroh and Zuko's relationship together and almost like a father son kind of, uh, okay. Like, the, like it starts to mature, I guess. It de definitely matures. Uh, they just get a lot more screen time. There's a lot of events that, you know, they go through um, where there's opportunity for them to save each other back and forth. Mm -hmm. um, and lessons you see them learn. Because also more towards the end of the season, you know, you kind of see that switch starting to flip just a little bit in Zuko. That's that's good because I, you know, obviously I, obviously I want um, I want I want to feel that development. I want to see that development, and I think it's if you say it's coming, then then good because you can kind of see it in Zuko's facial expressions during some of the scenes where like it's almost it feels like Draco Malfoy. Um, from Harry Potter, <laughs> um, like, like Zuko, Zuko is ambitious and wants to achieve his goal, but he has like the tiniest spark of a moral compass. And like, in this case, Iroh kind of sparks that, you know, sparks it and basically over time convinces him that not everything has to be related to like you still have to be a human essentially and i think we you know that he gives off draco malfoy vibes uh zuko does like they're they're similar yeah. similar characters what slander S uh, what blasphemy what what are you talking about <laughs> at this at no, this that's... point in zuko's story art yeah i mean at, at this point i'm just messing with you 
I, I, I can <laughs> see that from your perspective, how you, you would see it that way. For me, I see a lot of pain in Zuko and, and he's blinded by that pain and thinking that the solution is success and achieving. And I think that he's, he's wholly corrupted by the fire nation and their propaganda. And yes, I get it. I'm proving your point for you. Um, I, I just, I don't Bruh. feel that way. Bruh. I could see how you feel that way. I just, when I look at Zuko, I don't see Draco Malfoy. Oh my <laughs> I, don't, God. I don't see that. I can't believe you dog. Like, what do you mean? He, they both have abusive parents. True. They both have strong ambitions. True. And they're both dicks to the main character. True. And they both go through emotional development. Doesn't Draco help save the day at the very end of the series? <sighs> yeah. Okay. I'm not saying my point's 100% proven, but you got to admit, there's some similarities there. I did admit it. I told you that I can. I see how you can see it that way. And then you fought back. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, that's fair. Okay, fair, fair. You made me dig I just, in. I, I, I wasn't really trying to fight with you. I was trying to prepare for like eventually when the Wheel of Time uh, diehards eventually make it make their way to chat at some point. I'm I'm ready for them. I'm just trying to just trying to uh, get ready to bow up. I guess. Are you just getting some sparring in? Some light sparring? Uh, very light. Gotcha. I'm ready. I'm ready for some diehard Will of Time fans to get in and uh, buck back. Because, oh lordy, they fit in to catch it. <laughs> I'm ready. I'm ready for sure. Uh, I'm ready too. I'm, I'm ready to just sling them hot takes left and right. I'll tell them they're wrong to their face. <laughs> I ain't never read the book. I've, I've got uh, hot takes incoming when we get to the end of the series. Because uh, there's, there's things that I need to get out there. Uh, how much more time do you got? We're sitting at right at an hour. Uh, a little bit more. Uh, okay. Like, well, uh, what, I don't know what your plan is. Like, uh, I mean, I got, I could finish this out. Yeah, there's only, I only have a few more slides left. It cuts over to like uh, Zuko and Iroh. I don't know exactly where they're at, but they're talking about sticky rice. Oh, the, they're at the Fire Nation place where Zhao is. Um, oh yeah, the port. Yeah, and that's what I meant. Like these are the storylines in order by character. Mm -hmm. So like the uh, the Zuko, like it starts here uh, while they're let's say like the beginning of the episode or in the middle or somewhere, and then it jumps over to like they're in the town and Iroh's being himself. Asking for sticky rice, and then uh, then Love we it. get then we get the first look at Zhao uh, at the beginning of the episode. Also, I, th I I put first look. I don't think that's right. I think we saw him maybe at the end of episode one. Um, and they got such a good actor to play him. He's yeah. he just does such a good job of being a hateable person. Yeah, like. I'm going to make another uh, Harry Potter reference. He's kind of like Dolores Umbridge. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I'll get on board with that. Or Leandrin. Yeah, no, easily. Easily. I didn't like that bitch from the first time I saw her. Also, uh, I was telling you about how hard it is to capture a screenshot. I made uh, eight attempts before I got this jaw clench from Zuko. Uh, cause it's so, it's so quick. Like, uh, Iroh's talking to him or, uh, Zhao's talking to him and he's hearing something that he doesn't want to hear. And it's such a good, like, not, it's not a true micro expression, but it is, he, he does clench his jaw there and it's fantastic. Like, like perfect. Like I'm, I'm angry and I'm, I got to show it, you know, but hold it in, I guess. Yeah. Um, and, uh, anyways, uh, I think the last two are just 
like aftermath stuff after the fight with uh with Kyoshi and all that uh Zhao like sends another scroll to Ozai or sends the first one to Ozai I think this is when he's commander Zhao before he becomes general Zhao which I think in the show they call him Admiral Zhao which maybe that's what did I say is. general it's yeah, you said general I it's Admiral I said general. it's Admiral it's Admiral Zhao because uh, I just watched that episode. I watched some animated. I did watch some of the animated, and it's Admiral Zhao. Uh, okay. And then uh, here's our... I don't know if this is the first time I've seen him, but I I think so. This is our first look at Ozai. And he just looks like a villain. It's perfect. A fucking savage. He's got uh, what I call shark eyes. Just kind of that dead, that dead stare of you're just a you're just prey to me. <laughs> yeah, no, absolutely. He's a, uh, yeah. They did a really good job with him. And do you, do we get a shot of uh, Azula in this episode? No, we do not. No, we yeah, do I'm, not. I'm excited to jump into her character. But no, they did they did a great a great job with him. Uh yeah. Uh I don't know what I just did. Just missed messed up my slideshow. Uh yeah, that's the end of episode two. Just gave everybody a seizure flipping through the slides. My bad. I wish Weeds I... out the week. <laughs> um, that's what he would say. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> our viewer, our viewers are weak. Um. So here's uh, episode three. I mean, again, I don't know how much time you have. I, I've got to go in like twenty minutes. Uh, so we if you just, just we can do twenty. Yeah, we can just skim through a lot of this because. You know, it's just got Azula here as a spy, and then the reveal, ha ha ha, I gotcha. And uh, I mean, she, it doesn't really matter to me if she's not thin enough or not tall enough or like body language wise and facial expression. Like her facial expression does kind of give off like that baby face, like we talked about uh, on the phone. But like that's an evil, that's an evil crazy look if I have ever seen one. Yeah, I I think that it's hard whenever you see a character in your head, you see a villain in your head, and then you see right. somebody playing that same villain that looks so char characteristically different, mm. and and you want to misplace that, you want to be it's not right, but. In terms of persona, yeah, I feel like she plays it pretty well. And it gets better later on in the season. Okay. But you're you're right. She does have that maliciousness to her. Malicious. Yeah, that's a good word. That that's that's a better word than what I said. Uh here's uh like a couple, like a half a scene later or whatever. Uh, she says something, and Ozai's like, "Well, Zuko found the Avatar, so get lost." And she's like, "You can it's see, what? yeah, you can see uh, this." Let's see if I look up my uh, caption. Uh, it says, uh, "Here comes the breakdown, <laughs> the me the mental breakdown," because uh, th yeah. this is like she seemed to be like on board with everything, and then got derailed by uh, news about Zuko, and now she's on her way down. I think from here on out, she's pretty much an insane person. Yeah. I mean, I would say she was insane before, but I, definitely after this. Yeah. Um, this is, uh, the first look at, uh, may, I think is how you pronounce it. And Ty Lee. <sighs> and you know, that, I think, um, I don't, I don't remember getting to see them. 
but uh like i think they play a more important part in like episode, uh season two like yes. i don't i don't think we see them a lot in season one do we no i mean you always see her posse um around her right uh but like you said in season two i think they start because Azula and them embark on a journey along with Zuko and the Avatar um, on their own journey. Right. And I think it even gets to the point where they kind of break off from Azula, where they're more one-on-one -on -one with main characters yeah. in, t in the timelines. And so you see a lot more of them then. Okay, yeah. That's why I'm not I'm not too worried about, like, I know there's lots of complaints about how, how uh, Ty Lee looks specifically, um, but... I'm, uh, you know, I'm yeah, just... they definitely look different. For me, like I, I don't, I don't really care for them. I, I think it's pretty, it's pretty mid. It's not great. It's not horrible. It's not the way that they look for me. That's one aspect. But for me, I feel like uh, the personalities just don't really come through a whole lot. We also you know, don't... one is. Go ahead. You, no, you're 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 a hundred percent right. But we don't get a lot of screen time from them. That's that's true, but I think in terms of body language, you could say a lot about yourself with just how you carry yourself in a situation. And I'm talking to how I feel over the course of the entire first season, because you see them again. Oh, okay. A few times, a few okay. times, and I don't ever really feel like their their personality from the animated series truly comes through. Right. You can kind of see it, you know, like they they know what they should be doing. It just doesn't really feel like it's coming across genuine. A lot like Katara, you right. know, like she's playing Katara the way that you know she thinks she should, and for the most part, it's pretty right. But something just is off. Well, I mean, Ty Lee's supposed to be like a like almost fatally optimistic about everything, and May is supposed to be like a fatalist, the total opposite. Like if the world if the world got hit by a meteor, she'd be like, "Cool, finally." And then Tylee's like, the meteor will miss, I promise. And yeah. Azula's like, only I can be the meteor. So, I mean. Uh, but I feel like Tylee also is more energetic, a lot like Aang. Yes. Yeah. She's she's like the villain counterpart to Aang. And yeah. like she's, uh, she gives off uh, Harley Quinn vibes to me. Yes. In the animated yes. series, at least. Yeah. And yeah. they they missed that in this show. That's unfortunate. Maybe they'll get better in season two because we supposed to we're supposed to see her a lot more in season two. Yeah. Uh. Okay. Moving on. I think this is where they talk about water bending, and then I just kind of skipped ahead where they get to uh, Omashu. I think is what it's called. Visually, dude, they <laughs> crush this. Oh yeah. Omashu looks super dope. It looks amazing. Um, yeah, it does. Honestly, looks better than the animated series. Yeah. Yeah, this this looks great. They've got like the long caravan. They've got the big wall. Like it looks impenetrable. Seriously. Yeah. Um. Uh, I don't. I didn't take as many screenshots during this episode. I'm not really sure why. Uh. I don't know if I was just tired or realized I was taking a way too many per episode. But anyways, we have uh, Jet and uh, and then, God damn it, they they show the guy and then he doesn't say it. And this is like this. I'll tease you. Yeah, that's what I put. I put uh, tease. Oh. That's my title for this slide is tease. And oh, they uh, tease me hard. Yeah, they did, and uh, I think this is going to be another uh, short where I where I show the actual scene where he says it, and then cut off, <laughs> cut off before he says it. I hate you. I'd report you <laughs> for abuse. You need to report me for yes. abuse. <laughs> so, in a, in a more general sense, how how did you feel about episode three? Uh, I thought they were trying to put too much in the episode. There was too much going on. Personally. Okay. Okay. Um, like we had Katara with Jet and they go off and, uh, fight with everybody. And then you had like the Psy and his son story, story arc. 
And then you had uh, Zuko and Iro in there. And then you had Aang and Sokka. Like, everybody was out doing stuff. And it just felt like it was... And Boomy. And Boomy. And it, it all felt like a little too busy, I guess. That's fair. No, I don't think we had Boomy in this episode. I think that's episode uh, five, uh, five or four. Four. If we see Boomy sure, at the end, if we see Boomy, it's at the very, very end. Okay, because in my notes for episode three, I, I have that they introduce Jet, the Mechanist, and Boomy. If but, it, if it's Boomy, it's very, very brief. Okay. Because I don't have any slides for that. Okay. Like my last, my last slide is legit. Uh, Aang gets captured by the by the Earthbenders. Gotcha. Okay. Uh, so, like, they tease us with the cabbage guy, dicks, and then we see uh, the mechanics or the engineer's son. I don't remember his name. It's not important. I thought uh, they did a good job on size direction. Like, this actor is a really good actor, and I think he's either a fan of the show or his direction was really good because... I thought he nailed it like that, that awkward, uh, nerd dad. <laughs> uh, absolutely. Um, and then, uh, I had to get this scene in there cause like the name confusion for Katara was like a, a pretty funny, a pretty funny plot point in both, both series. I think like, He's he's the Duke. I'm Pip Squeak. You see this? I love big... that they put that in there. Yeah. <laughs> uh, we we're supposed to see Jet and Company uh, in uh, season two, right? Yeah. So they definitely they they condensed all that. Wow. Uh, don't we see them when they're in Bossing Say? Something like that. I don't remember. Yes. I'm pretty sure it's there. And they, I mean, and even the. Sai, you know, they were in the Northern Air Temple, so they they weren't here either. Oh shoot, you're right. Yeah, so that that's and and I think you're right. I don't think Boomy or I think you see Boomy right at the end where they're trying to uh like where Aang's trying to stop the bomb. Yes. But like you said, it's very it's very brief, very brief. So he wasn't in the, the episode for very long. Um so yeah, they really focused on Jet and the Mechanist, or Psy, uh, which neither one of them were there. That's funny. I didn't know. Maybe that's why it felt like it was too busy. Yeah, it was definitely a lot. Like I, I can see why they moved Psy there, and that makes sense for me because I feel like if they were to take a whole episode at the Northern Air Temple, it just like with everything they did after this episode, I don't really feel some type of way about it. Um, and so if you're going to have to put that in a point in the season, I'm okay with it being here. Jet felt a little off just because you're bound. Like you finally, you get to Omashu and now you're bouncing in and excuse me, in and out of the city. Mm. And when you think of Omashu, you think of Boomy. So the whole time you're like, you know, I'm waiting for Aang to, meet Boomy, his old friend, see what he's going to look like, see their their fight. And the whole time you're seeing somebody who's never even there in the first place. Well, two people that are never there. And then Katara's outside the city, out in the woods. It just feels a bit off. I'm going to have to think about that because, like, usually when they, when, uh, a sh like, from what I've seen of The Wheel of Time and from this show... Uh, specifically the wheel of time i'm starting to think about it in a more like analytical way like the who what where when and why like why is jet and the gang here why is sai here um you know why why and i i think the we have to have sai uh in the show like they couldn't cut him out because of the airships right isn't that uh, like a big plot point? It's a big plot point at the uh, in the finale. Yeah, 
and uh, Jet has to be here for um, for when they go to Ba Sing Se, right? Like, isn't that like a big plot point too? Is Jet's Jet's arc? Well, I think Jet affects Katara's arc. Oh, uh, okay, I got gotcha. you. And so I think that's why they're putting it here because for me, this episode feels off because it feels rushed, mm. but mm -hmm. it feels like they're doing all this to do growth. Like they're putting the they're putting Sai in there so that they can establish that him and Sokka worked on the airships, uh, and then that's how obviously that pops up at the end of the season. Uh, they put um, Katara's relationship with Jet in prematurely so that Katara can, I guess, mature in that aspect. Um, but I think it's also to show people which I don't feel like they needed to do, but I feel like this is what you take away is just how different people are affected in the Earth Kingdom by the ever-looming presence of the threat of the Fire Nation. You know, like size taken to working with them undercover to protect him and his son versus Jet, who's rebellious and trying to, you know, take matters in his own hands. And both Sokka and Katara both pick sides with the people that they're spending the episode with and realizing that they're both wrong mm. at the end. I think that's fair. I think that's a good point. I mean, I, uh, I don't have anything to add to that. I do have a picture of Iroh and Zuko. I think this is where they shot Aang on the, in the feet or whatever. Yeah, and then uh, and then I have uh, he did the thing is the name of this slide. Oh my, lordy, my cabbages! Oh lordy, did I bust on this scene? Yeah, me too. I had to, I had to rewind it because it was perfect. <laughs> it was so great. Oh, me me and my wife we were watching that just the whole episode. We were waiting on it because you see him you see him whenever he comes into the city you see him in the city then you finally see it at the end of the episode you're like bitch finally you give it to me yeah i uh it was perfect like well timed doesn't he say it a whole bunch in the animated series oh my gosh dude it's like in every other episode <laughs> that's so and funny that they every other episode of the i had the live action i'm telling you i i hope they uh i hope they show him on screen every episode and you never hear it again <laughs> i hate you <laughs> that's that would be perfect for me i just want the just blue ball the whole viewer base yeah just tease me yeah sometimes uh I, this is another one of those <laughs> that scene with iroh is really hard to pause so he's like all blurry on my screenshot um uh, uh, but I was trying to get a. This would probably be done better in my uh, my recording or whatever. But I, I have a hard time taking screenshots there. Um. Uh. But anyways, it was a cool scene. We kind of get to see like uh, a a hint at what Iro is capable of. We don't really see him bend up to this point. I think this is our first first look at it. And uh, like. I I remember watching the animated series and like you kind of get like you originally get like the vibe of like Iroh's just kind of like this like kind of grandpa figure almost like yeah he's he's Uncle Iroh but he's more like a grandpa and uh, I don't remember when it happens in the animated series but this scene right here is like here's your hint that's there's more going on than him just being friendly to Zuko. Yeah, no, absolutely. Uh, that, that was a note that I wrote down was you really get to see the growth between Zuko and Iroh in this episode. I feel like episode one, it was a bit off. Mm -hmm. Episode two, they took a step in the right direction and episode three really followed that up. Um, and, I mean, honestly, they just keep taking a step each episode. By the end of the, the season, honestly, the the two actors that play Iroh and Zuko are, are by far my favorite, and 
they're they're my favorite storyline in the show. It's a interesting take. I uh, I'll have to watch the rest of it so I can give my opinion because at the moment Sokka is my favorite, but Sokka is really cool, man. They, he did a really good job. Yeah, well, hopefully, uh, hopefully I can get to the end of this without uh, without any problems. Oh, is that what? I think I just found something on my um, on my uh, what do I call this? So I have like a an audio mixer on OBS and an audio mixer like separate, and I keep peeking out. Like it won't let me go past a certain point, and I think I just figured out what that means. It's not a good thing, by the way. It means my my voice is going to be clipped all over the place, uh, which sucks. Good. You can just keep teasing people. What do you, you can mean? Say something. You could. You talking about your voice being clipped? You can just put that in the uh, in your in our in our shorts. <laughs> yeah, I could. I, I just. Guess keep cutting it off i could do that yeah whoa that that audio is out of whack big time it was uh too much or what that was way too much like uh over the top or what yeah it sounded, mm. it sounded like you just leaned up right into my ear and started talking <laughs> <laughs> How you doing? <laughs> Jesus. Uh, and then my. Uh, anyways, we're we're both running out of time. My last screenshot was just Aang getting captured by the Earthbenders, and he's like, "Uh oh." <laughs> so that's it for episodes two and three. I didn't know. If, oh, cool. I didn't know if you had any like closing statements. I'm working on a, an end screen. So if you got any ideas on what to do there, I like my um, I like my full screen. I just need to like I have one for the Wheel of Time. I wanted to put one with um, with like avatar slides on it, kind of like I do for the Wheel of Time, just for one word. What do you What do you what? mean by end screen? Uh, kind of like I have the um. The yeah, I mean, you could put like the four elements up there in each corner. Um, I could. I know on the trailer uh, of the show where like the trailer before they ever dropped the show was literally just like really amazing graphics of like stone representations of the elements. Okay. Uh, those, those would be cool. Or you could even continue doing the characters and flipping them back and forth between the anime and, and the live action. I thought that that was kind of cool. Um, yeah, there's there's a lot of ideas that we could toss around. Okay. Well, at the moment I don't have an end screen, so I pretty much uh, what I do have is I have a way to fade to black, and uh, I thought that was pretty funny. So I could just uh, hit the button, and then uh, I set it for nine seconds because that's a really long time, and I also thought that was funny.